welcome back. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. If you are returning, you already know it. <laughs> you are fabulous. All right, so today's video, you guys, this is a DIY video. I am so sorry that it has been quite some time since I put out a DIY video. I've had a lot going on. It's summer. It's just it's just a lot. So anyways, I have put together several Dollar Tree DIYs for you guys. I cannot wait for you guys to see these. So let's jump right in. All right. DIY number one. So for this first one, I took a tray that I picked up from the Dollar Tree along with two of the self-adhesive wall tiles. Now, I wanted to put these two tiles together. So there's a little lip that runs right along the edge of the wall tiles. So I just cut that off and was able to match the two pieces up perfectly. I mean, they literally matched up perfect. I used some washi tape to hold it into place. I put one long piece right down the middle. I wanted this to stay together while I traced and cut it. So I laid my tray on top of it traced around it with a Sharpie, and then just used my scissors to cut this out. So incredibly simple to do. The main thing is keeping the two pieces together, which the washi tape worked out perfect for me. I did have to trim it a little bit once I got it cut, just to make sure that it was gonna fit down in my tray nice and flat. Now, while I still had it taped together. I took some Aileen's Tacky Glue. I love using this glue for projects like this. I just think it is great. So I used that, placed it on the back of my wall tiles, and then just simply pushed it down onto my tray. Now, mind you, I still have it taped. So I peeled my tape back, and obviously the two pieces are not stuck together in the middle. So I just used a little bit of hot glue and went right along the edge there, making sure to get enough that it would stay stuck down, but not too much to where it came out. Another thing, be super careful with the wall tiles and hot glue because it does come through the wall tile. Like, it, it's hot, okay? <laughs> Anyways, once I had it done... And on there, I took some sandpaper and went around the edges of the tray because obviously it's plastic and plastic and paint just don't really do real well together. It doesn't ever work out for me. So I decided to try using some sandpaper and roughing up the, the surface in order to paint it. Now, I used um, Waverly's Ivory and also Waverly's Antique Wax. So the first two coats that I put on this tray, the entire tray, I used the ivory chalk paint. I then went over it with the um, antique wax. I used a chip brush to go back over it with the antique wax. I wanted to make sure and get it down in every little nook and cranny. You guys have seen me do this before with these wall tiles. I love the look of this. I just think it looks so neat. And uh, my aunt loves it as well. And actually, just about every project that I've ever done that I use these wall tiles, I end up giving to her because she really likes the look of it. So anyways, I'm sure this tray will be headed to my Aunt Bobby's. <laughs> I wiped it back off with a baby wipe, got it about where I wanted it, and then took the ivory chalk paint and simply dry brushed over the top of this just to kind of highlight it. I feel like it really brings out the 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 distressing when you go back over it with that ivory because it just makes that antique wax really, really pop. So I just dry brushed right over the top of that and that's all I did with this tray. And you guys, it is so stinking pretty. I mean, it is just, I love it. <laughs> and just discuss a couple things with you guys. Um, I've had several questions about the daily devotionals. 
I have not done daily devotionals in quite some time now. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure if I'm going to put them back on this channel or if I'm going to start a new channel for the DIYs. I just haven't really decided. I, um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'm now working at the flower shop. Um, so I'm working at the flower shop Monday through Thursday. I work at the Brownsville Fish Market on Friday and Saturday. And then I have Sundays off to do all of my YouTube. So it's a lot. But anyways, um, I do want to continue the daily devotionals. I believe that it helps me and I just think it's the right thing to do. I'm just not sure exactly where to put them is, is the problem. Um, when I started putting them on my channel at first, it was fine. And then it began to just kind of dwindle down, like almost like YouTube was punishing me for posting daily devotionals as opposed to posting the, the DIYs that my channel typically posts. I don't know. Something happened in the mix of that and things just really started taking a nosedive. So anyways, um, I'll keep you guys updated and hopefully we can start the daily devotionals again soon. But anyways, I just want to let you guys know what was going on and I do apologize. But anyways, all right, let's jump right back in. All right. DIY number two. Guys, this one is so stinking simple. I have got two sets of planters from the Dollar Tree, a medium size and a small. I've got some flat black spray paint by Rust-Oleum. First, I'm going to use some of this adhesive. This is just like E6000. It's just like the Dollar General brand, but I placed that in the center of the bottom of one of these planters. I then added some hot glue. Of course, my hot glue gun was acting crazy, so I had time with it. But anyways, and glued the two planters together. Same thing for the other one. I just added some of the adhesive. I then added the hot glue and then added my other planter. What we're doing is making some planters for outside. I wanted two to go one on each side of my front door. And so I just decided I would make them because these are expensive if you go to a store and actually buy the planters that like sit up like this and they're on the little pedestal and all that. They're, they're very expensive. So anyways, I sprayed these down with some black spray paint and honey, they are too stinking cute. They worked out absolutely perfectly and I love them. Okay, DIY number three. So for this one, I grabbed three little birdhouses from the Dollar Tree along with three of their chunky wood cutouts and three candlesticks. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you guys was this uh, putty plaster, whatever you call it. It molded inside the cup, you guys. That's not been in there very long at all either. I did not know that it could even do that. But anyways, I just thought I would mention that. <laughs> I had added water to it on another project a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, and it molded inside the container. But anyways, I took my wood rounds and painted them with the antique wax by Waverly. I painted the roofs and the uh, bottoms of the birdhouses with the antique wax. I then took the birdhouses and painted the actual house part with some um, ivory chalk paint by Waverly. I painted each of these birdhouses exactly the same took some sandpaper, just went around the edges of all of the wood pieces just to distress them a little bit, give them a little, little bit of character. Wiped them all off with a baby wipe just to get off any kind of excess dust. And then I'm going to glue the birdhouses down to the chunky wood pieces. So I just kind of picked out which birdhouses I wanted to sit on which 
uh, wood piece. And then I just simply added hot glue to the bottoms and, and glued them down. Now, I sprayed the candlesticks with some chiffon cream Rust-Oleum spray paint. And then I went back with some sandpaper and distressed them. Wiped them off with a baby wipe just to get off the excess dust. And then we're going to start to glue the birdhouses to the candlesticks. Guys, this project was so super simple and it is so stinking cute when you're done. You could paint these birdhouses any color. You could decorate them any way you wanted to. And this would still be incredibly cute. Check it out. Are these not darling? Moving right along, DIY number four. And another super, super simple DIY, you guys. And it is so, so pretty. Okay, so I grabbed four of these jars from the Dollar General store. They were a dollar a piece. Super pretty. They've got butterflies on the front. I took some ivory chalk paint by Waverly and gave each of these uh, jars two really good coats. Now, I'm going to go back and distress them, but I always like to give it you know, a decent coat of paint before I go back in distress. I used my heat gun in between to dry these. There's always a link in the description box for this heat gun. It is a lifesaver. I used some sandpaper just to kind of distress these a little bit. I really wanted to bring out those butterflies that were on the front. Um, and then I made a couple little marks here and there just to give it a little extra character, if you will. <laughs> But I just used my sandpaper, I went around the edges, I went around the top, like the lip of the jars, and then I decided to take some twine. This is just twine from the Dollar Tree. I added a little bit of hot glue to the back, wrapped it around three or four times, and then glued it into place. So I just did each of the jars like this. I just wanted to give it a little bit of something, just something extra. So I just wrapped each of the jars with the twine, super duper simple, like I said. And then I grabbed these florals from the Dollar General Store, you guys. If you are not looking at florals at the Dollar General Store, you are super duper missing out because these right here, this was $6 per stem. And then on each stem, it had six, um, I guess you would say like buds, whatever. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but anyways, totally worth it. And this turns out so pretty. Oh my gosh, look at the flowers, you guys. Not to mention the jars, the flowers are gorgeous as well. number five. Now for this one, I grabbed two of these candy dishes from the Dollar Tree along with two of these little burners from the Dollar Tree. They're just like a little quick flame burner um, and also some of the river rocks from the Dollar Tree as well. So I grabbed some flat black spray paint and took these dudes outside. I spray painted them black. I then added some craft paper 
to the bottoms of each dish so that I wouldn't have to use so many rocks. Then I filled the rocks all the way around the little burners, made sure to get the rocks like up over the top of the burner as well. I didn't want to see anything except the part where the flame comes out. So I wanted it covered really well, but check these out. They're on my front porch and I love them. number six and another super simple DIY you guys I really tried to make these as easy as possible this time so I've got two of the gold baskets from the Dollar Tree along with two of these little lights now the first thing I did was just cut off all the tags and then I literally just looped it through the basket it's that simple literally just take one side of the little hanger off loop it up through the basket and then connect your hanger back and it literally will hang from the basket like it is that simple you guys i then grabbed some twine looped it through the actual hanger from the light and used a little bit of hot glue just to kind of close that uh, loop up we're gonna put some more twine around it but i just literally hot glued the the rope to itself or the twine should i say now this is a thicker twine i believe it came from walmart um i did the same thing to the other one i just added a little bit of hot glue and closed my loop up super super simple now i'm going to take some of this white twine from the dollar tree and it is it's rolled up in like a three three piece whatever anyway so i pulled off one piece of it a tiny amount and then wrapped it around the loop that we made just so this looks nice and finished it is you know it looks like a finished project not just something i threw together so anyways i used that twine just to cover up my loop I glued that into place and cut off the excess. It is that simple. That's all I did to these. And then I hung them up in my craft room and I stinking love them. Oh my gosh. DIY number seven. So for this one, I've got two of these wooden picture frames from the Dollar Tree along with two of the self-adhesive wall tiles. Now, I took the frames apart, well, took the plastic off of the frames, like took them apart and be sure you save that little, little bitty piece of like dowel rod that's in there because that's what holds the frame up. So you're gonna wanna save that. I also saved the little insert that was in the, the picture as well. That way, when I got ready to put my own pictures in it, I could size them by the insert, if that makes sense. Traced the frames onto the back of each of the wall tiles. Super simple. Make sure you trace out the center as well. You're going to be cutting that part out too. And then I just used my scissors to simply cut these out. This is another very easy DIY, and it's very very pretty <laughs> anyways i finished cutting those out and then used hot glue 
to secure them to the frames. Now, I used quite a bit of hot glue. And like I said before, when we were using the wall tiles, it gets hot. So be very careful because when you go to like push down on the um, wall tile and hold it, you know, to whatever you're gluing it to, that glue is super hot underneath that plastic. So just be very careful. Anyways, I used elephant chalk paint this time to paint my frames. So I just painted right over the top of the wall tile and also the edges of each of the frames. Now, I had to paint the edges not only because I thought it would look funny without it painted, but also because I got magic marker on the actual frame when I was tracing out the wall tiles. So, anyways, there was turquoise magic marker all the way around each of these frames. So, I did get the sides really, really well, and then obviously painted the, um, front of each of the wall tiles. Now, when I'm painting these, I kind of go back and forth and then I go like in a circular motion so that I'm getting it down in all of the little grooves. So, you kind of paint these a little different than what you would normally paint something else with like strokes. Instead, you're just going to go in like a circular motion because if you just go in strokes, it misses a lot of it. So, if you go in a circular motion, you're going to get all the little nooks and crannies like so. Super easy. Now, once I had that done, I took some clear wax by Waverly, mixed a little ivory chalk paint in with that clear wax to make a white wax, and then I painted it onto my frames. Just used a paintbrush, and once again, I went in that circular motion. I would go across it, and then I would go in that circular motion to make sure that I got that wax down into all the little grooves that are in these frames, or in the wall tiles, should I say. Now, once I had that on, I took a baby wipe and simply wiped right over the top of it. It is that easy. They turned out so stinking pretty. Now, one of them I took off a little too much, so I just added a little more wax. I mean, you can just play with these until you get them just like you want it. That's what I did, and I absolutely love them. Now, I used my heat gun to dry them, and then I just poked the little dowel rod back in. I added my own pictures, and check out how cute these are, you guys. least DIY number eight. Now, this one is a little more, um, I wouldn't say complicated, but it does have a few more steps than the other ones. I found these mushrooms, how cute are these, at the Dollar Tree recently, and then I also have some floral moss. I also have a canvas that we're going to be using that I got from Five Below, and it is an 11 by 14 canvas. Now, the first thing I did was take my mushrooms and rough them up with a piece of sandpaper. I know just as well as y'all do that painting metal never works out real well. So, anyways, I roughed them up real good with that sandpaper and then painted them. Now, I just played with the colors. I mixed colors together. I added this, took a little of that away, whatever. I just played with these mushrooms until I got them looking just like I wanted them. Too much fun doing that. Now, I took my canvas and a um, box cutter and cut the canvas away from the frame. Super easy to do. You just simply cut along the edges and then you can pull the canvas right off of the frame. We're just going to be reverse framing this. So, I took my frame, added some water to it by spraying it down real good with my mister, and then I'm going to use some brown paint to kind of stain 
this frame. I couldn't find my antique wax for some reason, and so I just thought, whatever, I'm just gonna wet my frame down real good, and then I'll use some brown paint and kind of stain it. Well, wasn't totally happy with the color, so I took some black and went back over the top of that just to kind of darken up that brown some. And then I'm gonna take a baby wipe and just go right over the top of it, or a paper towel, excuse me, and just go right over the top of that and wipe it back off, just like you would a stain. I then painted my canvas with Moss Chalk Paint by Waverly. Completely painted it, one really good coat, dried it with my heat gun, and now the fun part. So, I decided to take hot glue, add it to my canvas, and then add the floral moss. I know y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but this looks so stinking cute when I'm done. I wanted something different. I'm actually making this for my best friend. She's She's got a love for mushrooms. That's her new thing. She's decorating with mushrooms, and everything in her house looks so stinking cute. She is very eclectic, so things are different, um, very unique style. So I really wanted to make this something that would look nice in her house. So... I took that floral moss and I would add it to the front or to the canvas. And then once I got most of it on, I did take my scissors and trim it down so that I can continue to use what was left over. It did take me all three bags of the floral moss, even with the trimming, it took three bags of the floral moss to cover an 11 by 14 canvas. So I just continued that process of adding my hot glue, adding my moss, trimming it down, adding some more. <laughs> I just did this process until I had it completely covered. Now, once I had it completely covered, I went back over it and filled in any spots that I could see the canvas. Flipped it over, put the frame underneath it, and stapled it into place. I just used my electric, electric stapler to staple it back on. I got that stapler off of Amazon. Um, I'll leave a link in the description box for that stapler. It is fantastic. I used that same box cutter from before to cut off the excess canvas. I'm then gonna take my mushrooms and lay them out and kind of figure out exactly where I want to place them. I just kind of played with it until I got it like I wanted it. And then I'm gonna take some hot glue and add a crap ton to the back of these mushrooms and glue them down into place. Now, I did add a lot of hot glue just so I knew that this was not gonna fall off of this moss, you know what I mean? So, anyways, I added a ton of hot glue to the back of the mushrooms, and then I just simply glued them into place. Now, this is not for everybody, I understand that, but like I said, I was making this for my best friend, and I think it turned out absolutely adorable. You have to let me know what you think about this one in the comments. I know that I always have a blast doing these DIYs for you guys. Like I said in the beginning, it's been quite some time since I posted a DIY video, and so I really, really enjoyed this. Like, I don't know, doing the DIYs is literally like therapy for me. I, I just truly enjoy creating and painting and and I don't know. I just love it. I absolutely love it. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps my channel. Don't forget to share this with your friends and family and subscribe. That would be awesome. <laughs> Plus hit that notification bell so that you will know each time I upload a new video. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being with me today. And y'all have a blessed day.